seated, please. Kids, come on up. Thank you again, praise team. some help this morning. Can you come help me a minute? Okay. All right. So while I'm doing the lesson, Avery's going to give each of you just a couple. They get two or three, okay? Because I don't, it says shareable, but I don't know that I have this many to share. But as we look at the M&Ms, and as Avery goes around and gives you some, what, what do you see? As they're laying here in my hand, what do you see? Sweet. What else? Yes. Colors. They are all different colors, aren't they? So Avery, quietly and quickly give everybody just a couple to share. But all of our M&Ms are different colors. And what I want to point out is that we're all here. And as Mia said, we're all sweet. We're wonderful little children, aren't we? What? <laughs> Why are they laughing? Um, so, but we're all different, aren't we? If we look at each other, we're all a little bit different. If you have brown eyes this morning, stand up. Do you have brown eyes? And we've got a couple of brown eyes. What color are your eyes, Baylor? Green, greenish brownish. Okay, they're really different. Okay. All right, go ahead and sit down. Sit down. Okay. Um, if you have red hair this morning, stand up. Yeah. Good job, Mason. Yes, all right. All right. Uh, let's see. If you can curl your tongue. Have you guys done this at school? You can go like that. Stand up. Okay. All right. Some of you can do it. Some of you can. You had some extras? Okay, thanks. All right. So we're all a little bit different. Thank you. You can sit down, too. You're a great help. All right. So we're all a little bit different, aren't we? Because not everybody stood up when I said all those things. And who has made us different like this? Yes. God. God. Psalms 139, verse 51. Four, I'm sorry, verse 14. <laughs> I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. So God made each one of us. He made each one of us a little different. Just like all the colors in my M&M bag. Each one of us is a little different. But we all have that heart inside of us that needs God our Savior, and those works that are wonderful, right? All right, you guys go have fun in Children's Church today. Thank you. No M&Ms for the pastor. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hope your week was a good week. And that you're looking forward to this next week. I can't wait. I tell you what, the summer is going to fly by. Aaron, would you get those doors back there for me, please? Appreciate that. Summer is going to continue to, to fly by, so, so let's make sure that we, that we remember and be in the moment in, in every day. Right, because it will fly by. It'll fly by, and kids will be be back in school. They were like, and you'll be like, I can't even remember what we did this summer. So, so be mindful of every day and what God is doing. And uh, a week from tonight, our summer to remember will continue with our uh, community night of worship, and that will be right here at six thirty next Sunday night. And uh, really want a great showing. From our church because we're going to have people from not just Baptist churches and not just this community but but all from Jefferson County people from all churches will will be here and we need a great showing from from our home church so plan on being here and just enjoying not only the fellowship but the worship and the ministry together because I, I really believe there's going to be some wonderful things that that take place when we all t come together with different labels, if you will, different walks of life, and, you know, we can just 
we can just set aside our denominational labels at the door and let's worship the living God in spirit and in truth. And that's, the, that's what we do. And that, is, that is the goal and the hope that will happen. So I hope that you will be here next Sunday night to, to be a part of the community night of, of worship. And Daniel Nally will be here next Sunday morning to bring the word. I can't wait to hear Daniel again. He is on fire for, for God and for what God is doing. He just got off the road 30 days consecutively of preaching the gospel, seeing thousands and thousands of people come to Christ. And that's just every day for Daniel. Every day he sees people come to Christ. And the passion of God and just his experience, everybody needs to hear. It's one thing to go through a program. Thank God for programs if they work. But it's another thing to hear from somebody who does it every day and can say, this is how you win people to Christ. And so uh, he will be here next Sunday morning to bring the word. And then on Monday, the 10th at 6, he will be here to teach, to teach on evangelism, how to evangelize in today's culture. We need it. We need to be here for that. And so I hope you will make the effort to be here for that as well. Lots of stuff going on. God is good. Amen. In Romans, and we're going to be in verses 19 through 26 of chapter 3 of Romans today. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. If, if not, you can follow along. And lots of, lots of stuff here today. Romans 3, 19 through 26, beginning with verse 19. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped. And the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. And this was to show God's righteousness because of his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show the righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. A lot to unpack today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for, for today. We thank you for your word. And we thank you, Lord, that you give us these opportunities to, to dig in and proclaim the message of hope that we have through faith in Jesus Christ. So, Lord, have your way today. Speak the words that you would speak through me today for for your glory and your glory alone, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, let me give you some, some cliches this morning that you've probably heard many times. You may use them on, on a regular basis. If you say, well, let's just get to the heart of the matter. You've probably heard that. You've probably said it. Or where the rubber meets the road, that's kind of an important saying. And you know what that means. If you get down to the nitty-gritty of something, you know what that means. And if you talk about the, the nuts and bolts of the situation, you know exactly what... I'm talking about when I say those things. And you can look at something from 20,000 feet, like, like a city, those ha that have flown. You, I like to, I don't fly very often, but when I do, I like to be at the window. I love to look out and just see the creation of God, whether it's over the mountains or to see a city way down there, and you get such a great overview of of a city, the lay of the land. But if you want to know the culture, if you want to know what the attractions are of that city, if you want to know what the climate is, or the school systems, or what the shopping experience might be, or what the sports teams are like, and the neighborhoods, you have to take a closer look. You have to get down to ground level. And it's the same with Scripture. If you want a great overview of the gospel from, say, 20,000 feet, you can look at John 3, 16. For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You cannot get a better overview of the gospel than John 3.16. But if you want to get down to the nitty-gritty, if you want to get to the nuts and bolts of, of the gospel that you might have the opportunity to share with someone, you have to take a closer look at the righteousness of God which Paul says has now been manifested or made known in Jesus Christ. And here Paul continues to talk about the righteousness of God. And in the Old Testament, the righteousness of God or, or the character of God, if you will, was revealed to the children of Israel, the Jews, through the giving of the law was given to Moses and was established in the first five books of the Bible. A little bit of review from, from last week. And in Romans 3, verses 21 and 22, this is what he says. He says, but now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. That truly is the heart of the gospel, amen? And verse 21 starts with two very important, they're three-letter words, they're transitional, two words, but now. Just as he used in Ephesians 2, 4, he uses, but God. And I'm sure you know Ephesians chapter 2 begins with Paul talking about the fact that before we were saved, we were dead in our trespasses and sins following the course of the world, right? And verse 4 comes along and Paul says, but God, but God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ transitional you were dead but god now you are alive amen back to romans 3 21 but now the righteousness of god has been manifested apart from the law through faith in jesus christ for all who believe so we know that we know what the the but now transitions to right? But what was it transitioning from? The heart of the gospel, the, the nuts and bolts of the gospel is that, is that man could not live up to God's standard of holiness, right? And so he sent Jesus to be born of a virgin. And Jesus lived a perfect life, he died a criminal's death on the cross. He was buried in a tomb, and he was raised from the dead three days later, and he ascended to heaven, seating, sitting at the right hand of God the Father. Right? We know that. And God gave the free gift of mercy and grace through Jesus because we, you and I, failed have failed at keeping the law of God. Verse 20 says, For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. We talked about that. We have laws in our, in our nation that keep us, they're in place to keep us straight. Right? A lot of times they're in place so we would know what, what is right and wrong. So the law was established so that we would have knowledge of sin. In verse 21, but now. Since you failed at keeping the written law of God and you've fallen short of God's glory, but now the righteousness of God is fulfilled through faith in his Son, Jesus Christ. Faith. Faith in this entrance, in this instance, faith in his son, Jesus Christ, means utter reliance. 
utter, complete reliance on the risen Savior to, to forgive sin and to secure our eternity with him. It's God's free gift because of his great love for us. Utter, complete reliance on Jesus Christ, completely forsaking self as a means to God. That's what faith is in Jesus Christ. And that's the message we still proclaim. You can't follow the written law. We can't follow its rules and its regulations and its, its requirements. But somebody did. Jesus did. Jesus kept the law perfectly. And he was called the Lamb of God, the spotless Lamb of God. Sometimes I try to think about how somebody could perfectly keep the law. In humanness, how can somebody possibly keep the law? Was Jesus fully God? Yes, he was. Was Jesus fully human? Yes, he was. How did he do it? And now by following Jesus through repentance, through his shed blood, we are now justified as sinless in the eyes of God. Amen? We, are, we through the blood of Jesus, you and I are justified as sinless in the eyes of God. And God is no respecter of persons. There is no distinction, Paul says. No distinction in God's eyes, nor should there be in ours. Red, yellow, black, and white, brown, male, female, young or old, short or tall, bald or hairy, skinny or not so skinny, Democrat, Republican, Jewish or non-Jewish, verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's you and me, every walk of life. And without, without Jesus Christ, we are lost. And because of Christ, we are justified for all who would believe in his name. There is a condition. You get that. There is a condition. We hear that God loves us unconditionally. Well, there is a condition. You have to repent. You have to call on his name. You have to come before him with utter, utter reliance that he is the only begotten Son of God. And by works of the law, no one is justified. But now, but now, apart from the law through Christ, all are justified by faith in Christ. Look at verse 25. He says, I put in parentheses Jesus Christ because that was part of the previous verse. Jesus Christ, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. Jesus was put forward by God. You could also say that God put Jesus on, on public display for all to see. And you know, people used to be able to, uh, to live their life with a little bit of mystery, with, with privacy attached to it. Um, you know, was, when I was growing up, there were some celebrities that I admired, ball players that I admired, and we didn't know anything about them other than what we would see on, on TV. You know, they're a ball player, you know, his batting average and, and these kind, kinds of things. Uh, but that's really all we, we knew about them. And the same with celebrities. There was such a mystique about these people that were bigger than life. And you didn't really know anything about them other than what maybe you'd read in the paper on occasion or you'd see them on, on TV. They were, they were famous, but they were, they were untouchable for us. Their personal lives were not put forward or publicly displayed as they are now. 
because of the internet and, and social media. You know, you could, you could disappear on purpose, right? Nobody would know where you were, but not anymore. Everything is put forward for all to see and to know. And we know that everything that we read on the internet is true, so we can trust all these, all these things. But we like to let people know when our kids and grandkids do well, so what do we do? We put it on social media for all to see. We put them forward. If God the Father, work with me here, if, if God the Father did a status update on his ex account, it might read, Works of the law no longer justify. Salvation is now in my only son, Jesus. Hashtag truth. Hashtag forgiven. Hashtag propitiation. Hashtag blood bought. God put Jesus forward and displayed him publicly as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. And you know I'm going to define propitiation. Aren't you glad? Propitiation means that his shed blood was enough. His shed blood was enough to cover all sin for all time. His blood was enough. Jesus as our propitiation means that God's wrath, this is important for you to hear, that God's wrath against sin is totally and completely satisfied. His wrath is satisfied against sin because of the shed blood of Jesus. And he is now merciful and he is forgiving towards sinful people who put their faith and their utter reliance in Jesus. 1 John 4.10 says this, In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. It was enough. And the rest of verse 25 says, This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. In his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. The finished work on the cross declares God's righteousness and mercy for the give forgiveness of sins for sins that were committed before the death of Jesus on the cross. The work, the, the work of the cross is, is done, it's complete, finished. And this, this portion of verse 25 is, is really not one that can just be explained quickly in, in one sentence. We know that there were godly people in the Old Testament, right, such as Moses, Abraham, David, prophets, many, many others. Many other godly people in the Old Testament that lived and died before Jesus lived and died on the cross. In Genesis chapter 15, God makes his covenant with Abram. Abram, Abram had proven to be faithful and obedient to God. And in verse 6, it says, And he believed the Lord, and he, God, counted it to him as righteousness. And one thing that we, when we, when we look at this, this idea, this concept of, of former sins in the, in the Old Testament and God, God counted them as, as righteous, we have to bring into account that God is not limited by time and space or human intellect. Right? Was Abram a, a sinful man under the curse of sin? Yes, he was. Had Jesus, the perfect lamb of God, died on the cross to pay the price for sin? Not yet. Then how could 
God declare Abram righteous while living under the curse of sin? It's a great question to, to ask. It's a great uh, answer to know. But because God is not limited by time or space, because he's not limited by the intellect of man, he always knew that the work of the cross would be completed. One of the, the great mysteries of God, and I remember when I, when I caught a glimpse of this one time, that this made all the difference. Because we live moment by moment, right? We, can't, we don't see yesterday anymore. Tomorrow is, is yet to be seen by us. We, we can make future plans on based on what happened yesterday and all these kinds of things. But yesterday is gone. Tomorrow's not here. We see what we see. Right? But with, with God, all is one. All of time is, is at one moment with God. When Moses said, who should, I, who should I tell them sends me? He says, tell them I am sends you. God is forever I am. God is forever present. Being not bound by time and space and intellect. God sees all of history, all of eternity, if you will, at the same time. Hard for us to grasp, but it's true. The example that I received one time that, I th that really helped me was, you know, if you live in Mount Vernon, you know what, it's, especially on the east side, you know what it's like to be stopped at trains, on a, a f on a pretty frequently, you know. Well, when we stopped at a train, what do you see? You see the train moving by. You can't see the, you can't see the end of the train. You can't see the first of the train, unless you are what? Unless you are high above it. If you are high above it, you get that view where you can see the beginning and the end. But in the present, in the moment, all you can see is what's right in front of you passing by. And that's our limitation. But from God's view, he sees it all. So it is hard for us to understand that by not being limited by time and space, God knew that the work of the cross would be complete. He had already had it planned. He had already been there, right? And because he knew that it was a future event, he knew that he could count the faithful Old Testament saints as righteous based on the future finished work of Jesus on the cross and don't ask me to explain it any more than that but the Old Testament saints they knew of a Messiah to come and scripture says by faith they looked forward to the time of God's salvation Kind of like <sighs> salvation on credit. It ha hadn't happened yet, but they believed God for it. And based on their, based on their faith and their obedience, God counted them as righteous. And Paul calls it God's divine forbearance meaning showing patience or being calm when there's a reason to be upset. I'm really glad that God has divine forbearance towards me, aren't you? God showed patience towards sin for 4,000 years. Knowing in advance that Jesus would be the atoning sacrifice for all sin at God's predetermined time look at Galatians chapter 4 if you will Galatians 4 4 and 5 but when the fullness of time had come God sent forth his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons when the fullness of time had come meaning God had it planned and at the right time, according to his will, it came to pass. So my question for you this morning is this. Have you experienced 
the but now of God. Are you still trying to earn God's salvation by doing the right things to please him? And if so, that stop doing and start believing. If you're still on the before side, whichever it is for you, if you're still on the before side of, of but now, stop doing and start believing. Because now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from keeping the law through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. In Jesus and in him alone, we are made in right standing with God. That means we are justified. We are made righteous because of the righteousness of Jesus. Jesus paid the price for sin on the cross, and he did it once. He did it once for all time to make us clean before God. And that's the heart of the gospel. That's, that's the, the nuts and the bolts, and that's where the rubber meets the road. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for, for today. Thank you for these moments. Thank you. Thank you for your truth. That when it is, when it is declared, Lord, it's, it does your work. And I pray that today that, that your spoken word would have its way in changing minds, in cleansing, in redirecting, in aligning, not through the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ, forsaking everything that we have and that we are, putting our hope in, in you and your finished work on the cross. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand up.